Hi guys! Ever wonder how you can power devices like IP cameras, view IP phones, or wireless access point without traditional power sources? Well, today in this tutorial, I will show you how to do just that using PoE splitters. And you can also visit our solution page website now and discover cutting edge technology tailored to transform your experience. So whether you're looking for advanced networking solution, I'll innovations or seamless integration options, our website has it all. So power over Ethernet stands as a groundbreaking technology in modern networking and IoT devices. PoE revolutionizes the way devices are powered and connected by delivering both data and electrical power over a single Ethernet cable. This means devices like IP cameras, VoIP phone, and other network equipment can be powered without the need for separate power sources, simplifying the installation and reducing cable clutter significantly. PoE not only streamlines setup, but also play a crucial role in the Internet of Things landscape, enabling efficient and seamless integration of devices. Its ability to combine data and power transmission over Ethernet cable has transformed the efficiency and flexibility of the network infrastructures. So PoE splitters are devices designed to separate power and data transmitted through a single Ethernet cable. They function by splitting the incoming PoE signal into separate data and power stream. So PoE injector can send both power and data. But the PoE splitter, which divides this signal for devices that require only data or power, and it is crucial to differentiate PoE splitter from PoE switches. While PoE switches distribute power and data to multiple devices, PoE splitters are ideal for individual devices that needing separate power sources. So understanding this distinction is vital for choosing the right PoE solution based on the specific use cases and network requirements. So a non-PoE device, despite their functionality, often lack built-in power over Ethernet capability, requiring additional power sources for operation, example like IP camera and wireless access point. And it is essential to identify those devices within a network, as they might benefit significantly from PoE technology. So recognizing the power requirement of these non-PoE devices is important. Choosing the correct PoE splitter involves careful consideration of power requirement and compatibility with non-PoE devices. So it is essential to assess the power need of the specific device in question. And this assessment includes calculating the power requirement accurately. So by understanding the device power specification, you can select the appropriate PoE splitter that matches this need. And compatibilities between the splitter and the non-PoE device is paramount to ensure seamless integration. So here are some of our PoE splitter. This one here is the 5 volt PoE splitter. It is a convenient tool to receive PoE over the same cable and split it into power and ethernet for non-PoE devices. And it also come in a 12 volt version. This splitter can work with IEEE 802.3 AT standard and combined with PoE injector or PoE switch and provide up to 30 watts remaining power. And this one is our industrial 95 watts PoE splitter. This one is able to separate the received PoE++ and transmit a maximum of 72 watts power and gigabit Ethernet to power hungry non-PoE devices. Last but not least, we have a high power outdoor 802.3 BT standard PoE++ splitter. 
Now this is specially designed for outdoor tough environment application because it has great waterproof capacity. And this splitter is also backward compatible with IEEE 802.3 AF and AT standard that suit for low power consumption. It is IP67 waterproof rated and durable metal housing as well as wide working temperature range from minus 40 degrees up to 75 degrees. So now we're going to do a connection using a PoE injector and a 12 volt PoE splitter and connect the two routers together. So first I'm going to use a short patch cord to connect this router providing the data to our PoE injector. This is the data input port. This is the output port. Let's plug in another Ethernet cable to the output port and all the way to our PoE splitter. So now the splitter is getting both power and data, then separate them so we can connect it to our non-PoE devices. Plug in the power cord and the data and let's connect it with another router. Now I'm going to power up our injector. So as you can see, the integrated lights are getting on. This router is already getting the power and the data that it needs. So the whole connection is done now. And thank you very much for watching. We appreciate your time and interest. And if you find this tutorial helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share it with others who might benefit from this information. And your support help us create more valuable content. So stay tuned for our future videos while we dive into more exciting topics.